I'm Rory Metcalf, head of the National Security College here at the Australian National University. It's my real pleasure to welcome today Professor Satoshi Morimoto, former Defence Minister of Japan. Professor Morimoto is one of the key speakers from Japan at a conference we're hosting here at the college today on the future of trilateral security relations involving the United States, Australia and Japan uh, in the Indo-Pacific region. Now obviously with the uncertainties that the Trump administration brings to US policy settings in Asia and the world, plus of course the anxieties that many countries in Asia understandably hold about Chinese power and Chinese assertiveness in recent years, it's a really important time for US allies and partners to get together to talk about how to manage these uncertain and difficult times. And that's really the theme of our conference here today. So I'm going to ask a few questions of Professor Morimoto uh, regarding his own perspectives on these issues. Professor, thank you for joining us okay. and welcome to the National Security College at ANU. I might ask you firstly about really the, uh, the Trump administration and the alliance between Japan and the United States. This is an alliance of long standing. It's been extremely important for Japan's security and for regional stability in our shared Indo-Pacific region. What's your view on how uh, Japan is likely to approach the, uh, the challenges and the uncertainties and maybe the opportunities that the Trump administration brings? Well, still, the both countries share the common uh, security concern in the India, Indo uh, Pacific regions. The most uh, serious concern is uh, China, especially uh, Chinese uh, advancement to the Blue Ocean, especially uh, South China Sea, East China Sea, I India Ocean as well. And uh, this is the uh, most important uh, 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 security policy to meet and to uh, react uh, this kind of challenge uh, at the present and the future associated with each other. And uh, already uh, Japan and the U.S. has almost a uh, half century of very close security relationship between both countries. But recent years, uh, Japan and Australia and the U.S. and Australia uh, security cooperation and relationship is close to close uh, each other. I think this is a uh, very uh, important uh, timing uh, to uh, make a trilateral security uh, tie and the cooperation uh, to deal with uh, future challenge and uh, instability uh, in the Indo-Pacific region as well. Uh, well, of course, well, number, number two is uh, North Korea. Uh, North Korea has a double approach, uh, including uh, nuclear development and uh, missile development, and also uh, economic reform. Unfortunately, they are not successful economic reform. But in addition to uh, in, in, in that region, we have uh, another type of uh, concern, including uh, cyberspace and uh, outer space and uh, sea lanes of communication and uh, human rights as well. I think uh, mm, we share the almost all uh, national interests among the three nations. Uh, uh, and also uh, mm, even uh, Americans uh, intend to uh, revitalize their military forces uh, due to the uh, defense uh, difficulty, defense budget difficulties. I think they can not maintain the same uh, modernized uh, military posture in the Asian Pacific region. So both uh, Japan and Australia has to uh, make uh, some uh, compensation uh, to uh, help and assist uh, roles and the mission of U.S. forces uh, in uh, Indo-Pacific region. I think this is the uh, most important uh, agenda for uh, three nations' security uh, direction in the future. Thank you, uh, Professor. 
I think um, something I have observed recently is that Prime Minister Abe of Japan has been very active in his strategic diplomacy with visits to Australia, to Indonesia, Vietnam, the Philippines, and of course very active uh, forward-leaning efforts to engage with the United States under uh, President Trump. Uh, what do you think the purpose of Prime Minister Abe's strategic diplomacy is, uh, including in relation to the the new uh, Japanese uh, strategic policy statement about a free and open Indo-Pacific region? I think uh, we have uh, two uh, backgrounds. One is that uh, China also uh, expands the influence to most of ASEAN country, especially uh, uh, Cambodia, Laos, and uh, recently Myanmar and Thailand. But we uh, would like to the other uh, ASEAN countries, especially Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, uh, to uh, our side. Our side means that uh, uh, Australia, US, and uh, American side to share the uh, similar national interest and uh, economic prosperity and uh, freedom of navigation uh, in order to uh, sustain the peace and stability and prosperity in the region. Uh, our Prime Minister uh, made a very uh, energetic, uh, uh, constructive uh, foreign policy approach uh, to, the, uh, to the some uh, ASEAN country uh, in order to improve uh, their um, capability and uh, also uh, uh, some um, technology revolution and uh, uh, economic reform. Uh, I think uh, we uh, uh, share the most of uh, national interests and values with these countries and uh, we uh, increase uh, exchange of uh, personnel and uh, I think uh, uh, this is a very strong encouragement uh, for our Prime Minister uh, We make a very uh, active role to uh, uh, encourage uh, most of the uh, uh, Asian country uh, to our side. That is the first one. The second is that uh, uh, this country, uh, unfortunately, uh, has uh, not to uh, uh, possess uh, any uh, effective and uh, comprehensive uh, military might uh, to deal with uh, uh, military threat or menace, uh, especially by uh, China. Uh, the, I, I, if you look at the huge prospect of, of this region, this region is a maritime area. Uh, the whole island is an island country. And uh, we have uh, mm, comprehensive uh, approach to uh, maintain safer uh, uh, sea lanes of communication. Uh, not only in the ocean, but also South China Sea, in East China Sea, uh, to uh, encourage the, uh, these country uh, to help our uh, uh, military or defense uh, cooperation activity uh, with us. I think uh, uh, this is not uh, uh, some sort of associated uh, regional structure uh, to meet uh, Chinese uh, threat, but uh, I think uh, as we close to these uh, nation, in not only uh, uh, defense posture, uh, as well as uh, defense spend spending and also uh, uh, transfer of uh, defense uh, equipment, I think uh, this is very helpful uh, to jointly uh, uh, military maneuver and activity uh, in, in the region. I think this is uh, uh, the another uh, motivation uh, to, uh, to make uh, 
very uh, active uh, role to play. Thank you. I think my final question is really about the relationship between Japan and Australia, but also the potential, the potential to connect a Japan-Australia security relationship with other third countries, not only with the United States, where we have an established trilateral security mechanism, but also perhaps with countries like India or Southeast Asian, Asian countries. So I guess my question is, this is the 10th anniversary this year of the Australia-Japan Joint Security Declaration. Mm. What do you see as the opportunities to keep strengthening <coughs> the Australia-Japan security relationship? And perhaps how can we link that to, uh, to additional countries? Well, I think it is a little bit uh, to say that premature, but uh, as I said, the uh, US-Japan uh, security relationship is one of the most successful uh, security uh, ties, uh, not only the uh, Asian Pacific region, as well as uh, in the international community. I think our relationship, especially Japan and Australia, the security relationship is uh, uh, the next to uh, US-Japan security uh, uh, arrangement. If possible, uh, we would like to make a broad sense of uh, alliance relationship between Japan and Australia uh, associated with each other uh, to uh, supplement uh, U.S. roles and uh, um, functioning in the Indo-Pacific uh, region in the future. I think this is our common uh, interest and uh, values and uh, also uh, uh, this is the most important uh, measure uh, to uh, sustain and uh, maintain our peace and stability and prosperity uh, in the region. Mm, for in this sense, uh, so far we have uh, many agenda uh, between Japan and Australia, especially uh, already uh, we have uh, AXA meeting or signed but uh, in addition to, uh, we have uh, many uh, uh, agenda, new uh, mm, uh, agreement uh, to make a uh, more uh, progressive uh, bureaucratic uh, procedure between both, especially uh, the both country has to receive uh, military forces uh, in their soil uh, applied by uh, uh, a new agreement, which is corresponding to US-Japan status agreement. Also, uh, if uh, we uh, rent uh, some uh, facility in the Guam uh, Island, uh, we have more close uh, uh, security ties uh, among US-Japan Australia. And also uh, United States uh, is thinking to transfer and deploy uh, some uh, U.S. Marine Corps uh, to the uh, 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 South China Sea as a rotation for three months, twice in every year, uh, beginning uh, uh, next next year. And maybe a uh, U.S. Marine Corps stopover uh, our Okinawa, Hawaii and also Darwin uh, in this uh, country. And uh, so uh, uh, we uh, have to uh, uh, help and uh, assist uh, U.S. military presence in the Asian Pacific region. Uh, and, and I think this is the most uh, important deterrence capability be uh, reinforced uh, in the future. In addition to, uh, we have uh, many agenda such as uh, joint uh, military exercise and also uh, joint development and production of defense equipment and technology uh, and also uh, some uh, personal exchange, especially uh, expert uh, or uh, military uh, forces and also uh, uh, using AXA uh, we are uh, more close uh, security uh, uh, activities uh, uh, for each other. I think uh, we have a lot 
of agenda. We have to promote this kind of uh, agenda uh, for the both country. I think this is uh, uh, timing uh, to change uh, nature of uh, bilateral relations between Japan and Australia to, to, to joint uh, U.S. Uh, presence uh, in the region. In this context, I think uh, Trump administration uh, would maintain a rebalance, uh, rebalancing policy in the Asian Pacific region. I uh, think uh, new defense secretary uh, indicates uh, de-examining the balancing, but uh, I think uh, the uh, balancing uh, policy is the uh, most useful and effective uh, uh, U.S. Uh, policy to uh, uh, maintain the deterrence cap capability in the Asia Pacific region in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, and that's a, a very thoughtful tour of the horizon on these issues. Thank you again for contributing to our conference. Thank you.